let's get down to the uh, to the business here. Um, the the next record, secrecy. We have the best of humble pie. Right. Well, I'm not on the best of humble pie. I don't need no doctor. That's fantastic. I don't know if that's the live version. My all-time favourite live album is Rockin' the Film Art by Humble Pie. I think the best gig I ever saw was when I was about 14. They played in Hyde Park in London. I opened up for um, Grand Funk Railroad. And we have uh, The Faces, a pretty influential band. Uh, well, yeah. As good as a wink, hugely influential. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think this is their best album. Um, I was lucky enough the last couple of years to actually be playing in the faces. I was playing with Ian McGlagan. Ian McGlagan. He's a sir now, right? Isn't he a sir? Oh, Ian McGlagan. <laughs> <laughs> they call him Sir Ian McGlagan. No, no, no. In his own mind, in his own lunchtime. Like, I don't know, when I was about 15 or 16, I went down this place called Portobello Road in London. I'd found a store just like this. And when I started listening to music, I started when I was really young. And we had an old radio gram. My uncle, who'd been a bit of a teddy boy, gave me his old 78. So the first records I ever put on were like The Big Bopper, Great Balls of Fire, Elvis, Gene Vincent. On a 78, this thing went whizzing round. And they was all in cardboard sleeves that were stitched together. Anyway, when I was about 14 or 15, I went down to Portobello Road. I was flicking through the racks like this. And I found this record that looked like a 78. And I just picked it up. And it was by the faces. And I didn't know who the fuck they were. I thought, oh, I took it home and really dug it. And then I kind of researched it a bit and I realised they were a spin-off from the small faces. It's just kind of, it, it, it rocks, but it's this real kind of weird hybrid groove, funk, blue, soul, rock thing. I don't think anybody sounds like the faces. Full of character, that's what yeah. I like about them. Were you playing a lot of that stuff when you like, we, started playing? Or you're, yeah, you know, I, this is like one of the records that I learned to play bass. I would just put the record on and play along with it. How much did you, you remember, how much did you spend on your first bass, do you remember? Ooh, I think it was 15 pounds. Wow, incredible. Yeah. So you remember it like... Uh... Yeah, it was this, it looked like a Fender Mustang, it had like go faster stripes on it, but then I realised after um, a while, it had actually been a guitar that somebody had taken the six strings off of and put four in instead. And when I went for my little audition with Steve and Paul for, and this other guy, Wally, it was like a prototype Sex Pistols, they said, right. And I played a song um, and stuff off the Faces' first album called, called uh, Three Button Hand Me Down. It's got quite a fancy bass part that Ron Wood plays, actually. And I managed to get my way through that and they said, right, I was impressed, you got the job. But this was like a crocodile done D moment. They said, but you're not playing that, and that's not a bass. I said, what do you mean? And they pulled from out the underneath Wally's bed a case and it had a Fender Precision in. I said, where'd you get that? And they said, don't ask any questions. <laughs> and um, they said, that's a bass, you know. That's great. Um, and we have Moose Allison. Moose Allison. That's jazz. Yeah, that's jazz. Your mind is on vacation. Fantastic lyrics. It's got your molecular structure in it. If it weren't for Mose Allison, there wouldn't have been the Who. He's got a totally different kind of two-step groove. Interesting. When I went to see him, I really dug it, man. Cool. <laughs> okay, next uh, we got some uh, The Thin White Duke. I think this is the cool album for me. Oh, look, he's got a City Light suit on as well. Um, it's, it's got all this kind of 60s stuff on it. So I, I dug all these bands, but they're kind of, for the time, were modern versions of it. It's, it's quite an eclectic mix of things, but a great band on it. Did you see Emily play the Pink Floyd? The Pink Floyd song, yeah. That's incredible. And that's another album I would have picked out if I could have found it. It's Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Now let me ask you a quick question about Pink Floyd. I don't want to, I mean, this story, this, I don't know if it's a, it's a legend or a story, forgive me if I'm getting it all wrong, the, how you guys, or some of you guys met, one of you guys was wearing an I Hate Pink Floyd t-shirt. Yeah, it was a t-shirt that Johnny Rotten had made. Well, he, okay, now so this so begs a question. He had a t-shirt that had Pink Floyd on it, which he'd written over the top, I hate. But he <laughs> had the t-shirt in the first place. But then Paul Cook was wearing it one day, and we were collectively walking down the road from our little rehearsal place, in a place called, um, it's like England's Tim Pan Alley, Denmark Street. And as we were walking down the street, this cop had stopped Paul, and he said, are you trying to, he's trying to start trouble just for wearing a t-shirt in the street, and that was like, wow, you yeah. know. But it was funny, because I, I, I 
tail end of the summer, I went to some kind of do. It's a very good literary festival, very um, lardy dar now, people talking about their books during the afternoon. And I played with my band in the evening, and Billy Bragg played the next night, and somebody else. And th th my set, um, I'd, um, Dave Gilmore and his missus were dancing and singing along Pretty Vacant, which was no mean feat. But then afterwards we was chatting and this young lady I was with, um, I overheard him saying to her, who didn't really understand the, the connection, and I know Dave a little bit, he's lived near me, but he was saying to her, well the thing is, Deborah, is that um, Glenn used to have a band and they had a t-shirt from my band with <laughs> I hate written on the, over the top in yeah. Magic Mark. Yeah. And he was kind of indignant, but seeing the funny side at the same time. Another one from the uh, Thin White Duke. I don't know if that's apropos to call him still. Yeah, well, uh, Thin White Duke, I don't really know him as that. I, I, that, that was, I think that was one of his, not lame appearances, but the least happening ones. But I think this is one of the, the um, most progressive rock albums ever made. Guitar playing on it's fantastic. He, he made four albums around about this period. Um, two with David Bowie and two with Iggy. You know, Lost for Life and The Idiot, Heroes and Low. It's just such a fantastic body of work. Were you a fan of prog rock? What was your, I know a couple of you guys liked it. I remember reading about I, that. There were a couple I of was aware of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like pictures at an exhibition by Emerson, Lake and Palmer in very small doses. Okay. Um, I quite like early Deep Purple. In fact, one of my favourite songs is Hush, with Tommy Bowling singing it. That's incredible. And we have um, the Walker Brothers. Uh, well, the Walker Brothers. Uh, Scott Walker. I don't want to say the same old thing. I really like Scott Walker's, uh, Scott Walker's thing, Jack Brell album. Um, he kind of got me into Jack Brell because it's hard to get into him if you don't speak French. But there's a connection here with that and that stuff. I mean, Scott Walker's gone very avant-garde these days. So it all kind of links together somehow. Excellent. Well, Glenn, uh, yeah, we'll close yeah. it out on uh, the Walker Brothers, uh, yeah. Scott Walker. Yep. One of my all-time favorite songs at the moment is a song called Monte Guitaris by him. The lyric's great. It's like Scott, Scott Walker trying to do a Jack Pearl kind of thing and succeeding. Incredible. Yeah. Anyway. So got quite eclectic tastes. You can mix it all up. Great. I think great if, you get, if you're too narrow with things, you end up with very narrow music. And no, it's a, it's a great selection of great but thank you, you. you know, I could spend ages there, you know. There's loads and loads. Glenn, thank you very much for My doing pleasure. this. My pleasure. And we hope to see you soon. Thank yep, you. okay. Cheers for chivers.